volume nice and loud. Because we are controlling transmission with dance beats and r and You're in the mix with Lil Drummer Girl. With your host, Dawn Marie. Hey there, it's Dawn Marie Mutel. Thanks for stopping by for another episode of Little Drummer Girl. Today we have a very special guest. His name is Lily Lavea, and we're going to cover ways to promote your band and get more eyes and ears on your music. Lily has over 20 years' experience in the nightlife area, especially with national television and film projects. He's produced over 30 live concerts in the past 24 months and was the 2012 winner of the Niagara Music Awards Promoter of the Year. He was the first person to give Lady Gaga her first television interview, and his clients consist of entertainment personalities, nightclubs, music and concert festivals, and he creates brand and marketing strategies to help artists connect with their audience. I had to get him on the show and give you guys some tips from Pick His Brain, so let's get Louie on the air. Hey, Louie, how's it going out there? I'm fantastic. Thanks for having me on, and thanks to everybody listening. I appreciate your time. Well, thank you for being here, because I know how much you have going on, and I can only imagine how you're squeezing this in. So thank you for doing this. I appreciate it. Not a problem. Anytime. I have a bunch of questions for you, and I know we have a little bit of time, so you mind if we just jump right in? Let's jump in. It's great. Okay, cool. I mean, I myself do special events and have had production nights in New York City at nightclubs, and I know how hard it is to just do one event, let alone how the heck did you do 30 concerts in 24 months? How did you accomplish something as you just asked? Yeah, and then they keep rolling, too, so it doesn't stop at any time. <laughs> I, I think, um, you know, you have to think of this business as a business. It feels like, you know, I know it's a lot of fun whether you're a musician or whether you're in the promotion side or you're a DJ or whatever part of the industry you're in or even models and actors. I mean, you could quickly get away with the fun aspect of it and, and lose sight of the business and quickly deteriorate. So I think the first thing to remember, this is a business. As much as it's a very fun business, it's shark infested waters, but it's fun. you got to think of it as a business. So you got to have a strategy. So to produce so many events, you have to work with good people, build a great team, and have your proper scheduling strategy in place. And that, that's the best way to do, you know, even people who are not in the entertainment industry that have several products and several locations to take care of. Same thing. It can be overwhelming. But if you have the head on your shoulders, have a schedule, have a strategy in place, things get a lot easier. That's awesome. But how do you get into the business of promoting concerts? Because that's right there. I mean, it's a really tough business to break into. So is there something that, you know, people can go to school to learn? Or is it something that they can do internships with and really get, like, their feet wet? What would you suggest? I, I would say, you know, school's definitely not the place to learn the marketing of the business because it changes so quickly. Now, there's nothing wrong with going to school for marketing or business and get the generic sense, but this business changes so rapidly as everybody out there knows, right? That you just cannot learn the quick pace of it. So with that said, you can still do the school. Now, while you're at school, you can definitely learn user behaviors, right? You're, you're mingling with friends. These are the consumers. This is a great way to learn. So while you're at school, you can definitely learn what people do and how they play, you know, what social media they are on. But I think the best way, like you mentioned the word interning, I know how I got into it way back in the day was to work with another big promoter. So I offered my services to help bring people to the club, and I learned very quickly what worked, how the owners acted, how the bands and musicians acted, and then could branch off on my own and start my own uh, event. And then it just grew exponentially from there. So I think to start things out, everybody goes to parties and nightclubs. You always know the promoter or the DJ or the owner. I mean, you start to shake hands with the management. There's just little ways you can say, I want to get into this business, and the best way is to intern and learn. So you have to offer something to those people, because don't forget, a promoter might make money off the door, for example, or right. ticket sales, or a flat fee with the owner. So while they all want help, in their mind, you know, the little greed can set in in the industry, <laughs> what do I have to give to you, right? Why can't I do this on my own? And that, that sometimes hurts people's promoter business or venues by not building a team, but you need to approach them with the, I don't want anything from you, because in the back of your head, you're learning. What you're going to bring to them is traffic people, you know, that kind of idea. And that's a good start. I'm sure that they are approaching you now, and you're not going to approach them. Like if somebody that you heard that they're going to have a tour coming out, and do you go approach them, or do they come approach you to say, hey, can you help us set up this tour? How does that work with that? I think where I am at, at my business level, a lot of what I do on social media is social proof, showing what I do, sharing a lot of very tactical and strategy ideas that people can do on their own. Because of that, they're coming to me for the most part. So I don't necessarily need to, I don't think I have picked up a phone and called a specific festival or music. 
position for a while. I think I've done a little bit of Facebook on, but you know, I knew them. Hey, let's go for coffee, and it turned into a client. So I, I think for the most part, where I am now, they're mostly coming to me, which is a great place to be. But because of that, to get to that level, I've been hustling like crazy on social media, doing the right thing, making sure my festivals, uh, you know, either they're mine or theirs, are successful, and people see that, which is great. That's where they come to me and say, hey, I have a festival, or hey, I'm a musician. And when I post on SoundCloud and Facebook, it fizzles right away. I get like, you know, 100 people listening to it. What do I do? I need 10,000 listeners. I need, you know, I need it to grow. I, it's just it's too much noise out there. So they'll, they'll come to me and we discuss their fit and go from there. Cool. Now, you were in the television business as well. How did you get the gig of being a, a television host? So for TV, I, I still want to be on TV again. I think it's a cool industry. Now, it may not be on terrestrial TV because digital is so big now. It might make sense just to create a YouTube show nowadays. Oh. Mm-hmm. It really did. Okay. Especially as a marketing person, I could probably get viewership like crazy as opposed to being at the mercy of regular TV now. But today there was a music TV channel. It's like an MTV. I was doing the you know nightlife and, and music promotions already. I thought to expand my brand, why not be on television? So I'm even more recognizable and I have an even stronger resume to work with. And so I approached a couple of TV stations. Of course, not easy to get in. So what I did was I had a couple of friends, a little production crew, and I made a pilot for a show that I thought would fit. So I submitted that and said, hey, the show is free for you. I will produce it, and on Barter, I will go sell the ads. They watched the show. It was a decent show. Uh, it's like going to nightclubs and interviewing musicians, things like that. They said, you know, we don't really have room on our schedule, but you're not a bad host. Why don't you just do some hosting on our show, which was really my, my goal to begin with. And that's how I got into television. So I, I think throughout this entire industry, for me, I've been able to, if the door's not open, I will build the door beside it and break that open. <laughs> I love that. That's it. you got to break those doors down. you got to learn the rules and break the rules. So. That's it. Yeah. <laughs> and I always say that, okay, there's no job. Let's create one. You know, what can you do to make it work? And, and I think that's, that's key, yeah. I mean, because the doors are never open. You know, sometimes slight things open, little windows open, you try and get in. But everybody tries to go through the same door when it opens, Right. So exactly. I've been really good at and sharing the same story of sometimes that door's not open and you can't break it down or when it opens, flooded with people, build the door beside it. It might be a sideways through. And I did that with radio as well. I wanted to be on radio as well. And of course, I had friends that ran radio stations, but still there wasn't room for me to be on, right? There was no hiring going on or if they did, it went to the schools. And so I made my own syndicated radio show and I, and I banged down doors of syndicators like Westwood One, like major syndicators. And I got my top 10 countdown shows. I'm like 300 and some odd stations, app oh, nice. you know, digital and all that stuff. And, and I built the door beside it again, and I got on stations on my own. It's, there's ways to do it if you have a little bit of that entrepreneurial thought process. That's a very good point there, because <laughs> I think a lot of people get a little bit of a, a fear inside of them to say, oh, I don't know if I can go, you know, approach that person or do, dream that big, because you have to dream big. And I feel like even if you don't get that big dream, you may get something close enough to it or feel, you know, just a part of it that makes you feel like, wow, I got it accomplished and they actually made it happen. Even halfway is a great stepping stone to move up. So even for me, when I started off at little bars and then nightclubs and now festivals, every one of those was a stepping, you know, stone and another jump up the ladder because I could use it to my advantage. And I would exactly. harness that and, and use it for social proof and all this stuff and go to the next level. So you're right. If, if you don't get the big goal right away, sometimes, I mean, a lot of times, the small wins count through the big victory. So if somebody wants Absolutely. to get on a record label and you don't hit it yet, you don't give up. They're small wins. Oh, look, we got a thousand listens on Spotify. Oh, look, we got X amount more likes. Oh, look, there's small things. And, and each one of these adds up to something big if you have your sights set on the goal and not to be worried about not getting there yet. You just got to use them to your advantage. So touching on that point there, do you have any tips on how uh, artists and musicians, they can actually grow their fan base for using social media? Absolutely. I mean, I, I think having said that small that's something that people should realize. You want to post, I would say post daily. You know, first thing you should do is know what your brand is. So whatever your brand is going to be, if you're a band or you know, you're a rocker, or you're an electronic music producer, a hip-hop artist, whatever you are, you have to know what your brand is going to be. So what kind of things do you say on social media that fit your brand? So if you're, like, look at Khaled. You know, he's funny. He's on Snapchat. Everything he does is enjoyable. It's hilarious. Kill and Francis, same idea. And other ones are a little bit more serious. So whatever your brand is, and it could just be you. Yourself is very easy to be yourself. So just be yourself. Don't, don't pretend, right? But everything has to roll around that and your causes and your why. So it becomes a little bit easier to post every day because even if you're just posting French fries, if that fits your brand, that's okay to say. If it doesn't, then don't say it because it doesn't fit. So for me, you know, 
politics doesn't fit my brand whatsoever. I know there's a whole storm going on right now. <laughs> but I, I have officially nothing to say either way because it doesn't fit my brand. So why would I mention something that has an opinion that doesn't fit my brand, right? <laughs> so <laughs> That's very, very important. So key. That is so key. Yeah, and that's kind of the first thing. After that, you know what to say every day, and you can start building audiences around that. So I would definitely – look, people spend money on drum kits and new guitars, and I, I want the newest, you know, EG, you know, players and, and mixers, and they go spend money on new things, but they don't save any of that money for their own marketing. They think I'm going to create a great song, and yeah, it might be a great song, but a record label is going to magically sign me. Record labels also have to think about investing in you, and what are they going to get back out of that? And it's a tough biz right now. You are better oh, off yeah. not buying the new guitar and putting a thousand dollars into some marketing to start growing your brand. You know, you really target the right audience, whatever your brand is and whatever your sound is, and start getting people to take notice of you. Before you know it, you're going to gain followers, fans, people that want to buy, and all of a sudden you're making ten thousand dollars. And fifty thousand dollars and a hundred thousand dollars a year, and that's pretty good without a payroll. You could do what you want, not have a side job, and you're making six figures, and that's not that hard to attain if you have a strategy. Uh, that's that's phenomenal words of wisdom right there, because um, I think there's you know people I think afraid of there's so much competition. Yes, there is, and that's why you, you have to just scream a little louder than everybody else. I think these days to be heard. So, like you say, you know, to, to take those marketing efforts to actually plug it into their business so that they get to perform more gigs and then they can do more video while they're performing or then they can get more fans on their guest list so that they can get their followers going. Um, with all the public events that you've had, I mean, I just actually read a post that you did on the, uh, on the mistakes, which I really thought was <laughs> wonderful. Uh, have you ever had uh, anything go, like, terribly wrong? And if so, like, how did you fix the issue? And, and, uh, oh, yeah. How I did it go wrong. How did it go wrong? You know what? I think you just have a cool head on your shoulders and your brain will start to see clearly. You know, a couple of examples. I remember one, we, I had an event and it was on a holiday and the venue was taking care of security. You know, it was, it was a typical promoter deal. So years ago, I was buying the talent and promoting. I got the tickets. They had the venue, got the liquor, security, all that stuff. Well, they also said they were going to take care of the staging and the back line, which is all the, obviously, the equipment, right? Uh, you know, the cars, drum kits, stuff like that. So, you know, the sound check is about to happen. Everything's great, except there's no drum kit there. And the <sighs> manager says, where's the drum kit? Of course, I didn't have the tech writer on me because I just forwarded right to the owner saying, look, you're taking a tech writer. Here it is. I have my own thing to worry about. And I'm like, oh, I didn't even know there was a drum kit needed. So he pulls it out. Here's the tech writer. You know, you're the producer of the show. Where is it? And I said, well, you know, I'm not blaming anybody, but that was the owner's responsibility. So let me go find out what's going on. You have to take responsibility, even though it's not your fault. I went to the owner and he's like, well, it's your show. you got to figure it out, which is really <laughs> going to happen. But, and you know, here's the worst part. As if, you know, I couldn't just, you know, get the phone and say, okay, local, you know, uh, rental place, I need a drum kit, these specifications, bring it over, whatever cost, no big deal. It's a holiday, so everything was closed. <laughs> I couldn't oh, get the drum kit. It wasn't that easy to fix, right? So I had to, you know, instead of panicking, I went to the you know, manager, like, the show's not going to happen. I said, like, relax, go to the green room. We'll get the drunk. It's all good. We'll do the holiday. I said, you relax. My show, you said, I'll figure it out. Don't worry about it. And I'm like, what the hell am I going to do? So I obviously went to, everybody's in a band or a DJ nowadays. So I went to my social media. I, I talked to the other people who are working on the staging. You know, who has this style of drum kit around or something close to it? And a few of them said, I'm in a side band. I'll call my buddy, see if he has it. Another one said the same thing. Eventually, I got my drum kit there in good time. Show up, you know, without a hook. <laughs> <laughs> and no buyer that was happening behind the scenes. <laughs> it's all good. It works. <laughs> that is an awesome story. Oh, man. It yeah. might have had no show, right? <laughs> and then, yeah. you know, what a bad time. A holiday. So I couldn't call the rental place and just get one. But you, again, you could panic and cry about it, or you could say, look, we've got to be able to figure this out somehow and just have that clear head. Again, it's a business. Have a clear head and say, there's got to be some solutions. And I've been very good at fires constantly happening and being very calm and, look, Here's a couple solutions we can go by, and let's do them. And if I couldn't get a drum kit, I don't know what my answer would have been, but I'm sure I would have figured it out. <laughs> you would have started, like, rapping some drum beats or something. <laughs> I don't know. I was up to that. Just band. <laughs> oh, that's so funny. That's a great story. I remember, uh, you just made me think about a flashback here when, uh, 
I had just started to promote nightclubs and I was doing a music industry networking evening in Manhattan and it was supposed to be at the Heartbreak nightclub, which was down in Barrack Street at the time. And are you from New York? Uh, no, but I love New York. <laughs> so here I am thinking, oh, great, I've got this thing. I've got the, the musicians, you know, the artists lined up for the gig, this and that. I show up so we could do a sound check and there's a big sign on the door and it says, you know, <laughs> and I'm like, uh, nobody told me they were closed. Yeah. <laughs> so, okay. I was like, oh, what do I do? Yeah. So I'm thinking, I had about 150 people coming to this event, and I'm like, wow. So then I noticed like a couple blocks away there was uh, SOBs, which is a really great like Latin Caribbean style nightclub. And so I go to the manager there and I ask them about it. And they were like, oh, yeah, you know, we can squeeze you in tonight. You have to go before this other band. <laughs> so we're oh, like, nice. really? Wow, okay. So then I, I call up this co promoter that I was working on this with. And he's like, no, no, no. Tell him we don't need it. We've got this restaurant thing. Da, 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 da. And I'm like, are you sure? And he's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, we got it all set up. So I let. SOBs go, and I go down to this other place, and I'm thinking, what the heck? <laughs> I go in there, and it's literally a restaurant. Oh, and I'm thinking, I, I, that's why I'm like, well, what the hell? Where, where, where's the stage? <laughs> where yeah. we gonna have the performance? And they put like this door over these crates. <laughs> I use it as a stage. It was like the most embarrassing moment of my life. <laughs> I was oh. just thinking. This I gave up SOBs for this, <laughs> and and I learned a very valuable lesson: listen to your own intuition and don't listen to anybody else. <laughs> Especially in no. an emergency situation, <laughs> that was a trip, but it, it, it was what it was. Yeah, I mean, so many artists out there can just trust that. Okay, you've got it handled, and then come in and. It's sort of a disaster, and then they feel embarrassed. You know, like you feel like, what am I playing that? I, I didn't <laughs> know that. Like, you know, and it's your brand that looks tarnished. And, you know, that's why a lot of big agents only work with reputable promoters or people that have not messed around. It's not just, oh, did they pay me or not? Of course, that's a big thing. Oh, you haven't paid? Okay, well, you're out. Oh, you're blacklisted. But, you know, are you going to treat the artist well? Are the flights going to come in? You have a driver ready. They're not sitting around waiting. It's food. You know, there's Everything's got to work well. If you're a good promoter, then big agents will start to respect you because they know they can put trust in you not to pull something like this off and really enhance right. the brand of the artist. So that's important on the other side of the business as well, right? Good story. Absolutely. And the sad part was the person who I was co-promoting the place with owned another nightclub in New York. So I thought he was going to be reputable and he would know <laughs> the right yeah. thing to do. I mean, at the time, I was probably about 20 two years old or something like that. And yeah, I just started doing promotions and so it was all new to me and I was like, well, yes, yeah, a very important lesson learned. Everything is a lesson learned, I think, in life, you know, but there's some that are bigger lessons than others. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so what are some of your favorite marketing tools? Who do you use? Obviously, like, yeah, social media is by far the biggest one now, especially in our demographic entertainment. I mean, everybody's on social media. Again, you know, it's just the, the sandbox where everybody's playing it, right? I mean, I stop mm -hmm. printing flyers. Radio, I do very little of. I do it for the major festivals and really just to get the reach. But to be honest, I bet you if we cut it out or it's my radio friends, it probably wouldn't affect us. Um, wow. It seems like it's demographic. Um, entertainment music is so into social media. If we're doing the right thing on there, then we win all the time. And so doing the right thing doesn't just mean, like I mentioned earlier, here's my new release. And that's it. Or come to my Friday night. It's ladies night. There's a flyer on social media. And I'll even boost it to the right target. That's not what people want to see. They're not there to get ads in their face. You need to create content and context around what's going on. So when I do a music release, the last you know, one I'm doing actually right now for a, a producer DJ is, you know, in week one, we build all the assets. So we work on what's, what are the different um, posts that we want to make. Do we want to talk about, oh, behind the scenes this. We're working on the video. It's like we come up with, with like a three weeks of strategy of posts every day that are not just hard to sell. Release is coming, release is coming. It's just stuff to get engagement. And then, you know, the second week we start to use that. And we build up an audience of, hey, we know what the audience of the, let's say, EDM fan is, what countries are best suited. So let's build another audience from Facebook of DJ Mag, people who work there and might write blogs on us, and industry people, radio, you know, digital radio, you know, that kind of record label owners, that kind of idea. 
and we start to push out our post by boosting it just for those audiences. You know, week three, we start teasing heavy, coming out next week, coming up next, next week, and next the week after is the release week. And those, and you know, when I'm talking about audiences that people are not familiar with, like Facebook and Instagram and even YouTube and Twitter, you can advertise directly to a target. So I can say people who like EDM that are from Italy that are 19 to 22 and also like Patron to Killer, like whatever you know is your, your market, you can advertise that. You can build those audiences and directly target. Yes, like I mentioned earlier, there's a little bit of an ad spend there, but, you know, with a little push, it can go a long way. I just put out a Halloween um, little video for myself, my own brand. I had a girl do a little dancing and then it scares people. It's like 20 seconds long. I put $50 into it to get the ball rolling. And it already has reached, I think, a quarter million people. And uh, I believe the actual views on it are in the 75,000 actual views. With $50, wow. that's tar- targeted views that, that were put in there, like hundreds and hundreds of comments and like a hundred shares. Like they're actually engaging in it because they found it funny and I got them and it was all well branded and put to the right person, right? So if you do that for your music or your event, it goes a lot longer than just here's my Friday flyer. It's a hard sell and people just don't want to see that. You have to build content, make people like you and want to support you. And then you got raving fans. Absolutely. I mean, actually, you got me on that one, too, because I did catch that. <laughs> and, and I was like, oh, that was good. That was really good. Happy Halloween. <laughs> right? So you must travel a lot having festivals all over the place. How do you handle, like, your private life versus your public life? And do you have balance to, to keep from stressing out and losing it? Yeah, I think, I mean, for the most part, my life is fairly public. Um, you know, with my, you know, with my wife and kids, they, they travel with me as much as I can bring them with me, which is great, which is a lot. Um, and, and they love it. They're really young. So my wife was a teacher for homeschooling them. So when we go travel to Philadelphia, let's say they learn about the constitution and, you know, uh, Benjamin Franklin is really good for them. So it, we get to see, you know, North America really, really nicely in that respect. And again, for my actual brand, you know, my personal Facebook profile, we'll talk a little bit more about some personal stuff. But my actual Facebook page may not ever have anything about my kids and stuff like that because it's, it's my brand to be um, nightclub and bar and music, you know, marketing and business advice. So none of that would ever fit into it. So again, you know what you're talking about, like I mentioned earlier, politics and things like that. That doesn't fit into my brand. So those posts will never even show up there. But uh, yeah, I mean, that's for that. As long as you know what your brand is, you can post properly. Awesome. And do you play an instrument? I don't. I used to play piano, but that was like a million oh. years ago and I... Um, I don't think I was great at it, and I don't think I'm even, yeah, I'm probably worse now. <laughs> so, and then I, you know, I think you know your strength. Like, I love music. I'm not a singer by any means or, or someone who could play an instrument. Uh, I think I have a great ear for music, and that allows me to choose possible hits or maybe work with somebody that might have a hit. Maybe even put some advice into a song saying, look, maybe these tweaks work. You tell me. I don't know. It's what I hear. And I really am good at the business side, marketing and branding, stuff like that. So, that's been more fun for me, and that's where I lead. Cool. So what are some of your favorite things to do when you're not working? Um, I love playing um, with the kids on uh, Xbox or Nintendo Wii. love jumping in the hot tub. Playing hockey is great, and that kind of stuff is good. Traveling is always a lot of fun. I love that. Cool. Is that ice hockey or roller hockey? I used to do a lot of ice hockey. Now it's roller or just uh, floor hockey, just for fun. You know, it's, it's great to do that. I, I can't really get into the league because I'm so busy traveling around. Yeah. I can't make, I can't make the, the full commitment. So there's small, like, uh, summer leagues that I can get into because they're kind of short and then one off here and then. Nice. I used to work for the NHL. I love ice hockey. It's such a great sport. Oh, nice. And I'm a very big New York Ranger fan. So uh, if you're right in New York, yeah. I'm familiar with it. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> cool. Always great. <laughs> Well, Louis, look, it looks like we're almost out of time here. How can our listeners stay in touch with you and follow you and keep up with all the great things that you have going on with your life? Absolutely, yeah. Uh, obviously, I'm all over social media, and I do have my blog, uh, my website, and all of that is my first and last name. So, Louis LaBella, that's L-O-U-I-E-L-A-V-E-L-L-A. So, LouisLaBella.com, you can reach out there, and, and, and obviously all over social media, so Facebook is uh, slash Louis Lavella or Twitter and Instagram is at Louis Lavella. Any of those places, follow me, see what I'm up to, learn and reach out. I love sharing any insights I have to, to anybody out there. Awesome. Thank you so much. And thank you again for being here tonight. I really, really appreciate it. And I look forward to uh, any events that you have coming this way. Please let me know and I'll also do a plug for you over here and maybe even get to go. That sounds fantastic. Thanks for having me on. And I want to thank you listeners out there for joining us tonight. 
I wouldn't have a show without you, so thank you again for being there. And if you like this episode, please share it and tell your friends and subscribe and so that you don't miss out on any new releases. We're on iTunes, iHeartRadio, Stitcher Radio, and SoundCloud. And don't forget to stop on our website at www.littledrummergirl.com. That's L-I-L, Drummer Girl. And sign up for our newsletter for more tips, tricks, and videos and some tutorials. And remember, it's never too late to begin to live the life of your dreams and leave the trailblazing behind you. So rock on and rock out, and I'll catch you on the flip side. Namaste. 